Hey guys, we're back home from our day out in the city, and we had asked you guys a couple days ago <coughs> for some <coughs> questions and answers, so we... Well, some questions. Well, yeah. And now we're going to have some answers. <laughs> so, we have your questions here, and <coughs> we're just going to go through them and answer them as they come, and we'll see how this goes. Have you guys tried haggis yet? Now, if you don't know what haggis is... Which, what, let's look up a definition. Okay, I'll look on Wikipedia or something. I am under the impression that it's kind of like sausage, but it's like a pig stomach stuffed with like meat and potatoes and stuff like that. Oh, this should be rich. This is straight from Wikipedia. <clears throat> haggis is a savory pudding containing sheep's pluck, which is heart, liver, and lungs, minced with onion, oatmeal, suet, spices, and salt, mixed with stock, and traditionally encased in the animal's stomach and simmered for approximately three hours. Okay, I did not know that, and I did not need to know that before I try this. Wait, I thought it was pig's stomach, not sheep's. Well. What's the difference? Anyways, <clears throat> so haggis is like a traditional Scottish Spanish. meal, and it's everywhere here. Like, all the restaurants serve it, yeah. and we haven't tried Ooh. it yet, so... So, we oh, yeah. picked up some haggis on our way home today. Just for you guys. Oh. I mean, for us, too, I think. I'm real nervous. So, it was called, on the menu, it was haggis and tatties. Haggis and tatties. Which Just is... potatoes. Yeah. So, it's like mashed potatoes, gravy, and haggis. Which, the gravy looks... Gelatinous. All right. Okay. Oh, it's softer than you think. <laughs> it's. <laughs> it looks like it looks like scrapple. Yeah, sorta. Oh. Okay. You ready for Whoa. this? You All right. Go I think time. I'm gonna like it. I'm pretty sure. I think it's like a, a cross between scrapple and sausage and meatloaf. It's just animal byproduct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait. 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 Okay. Okay, ready? All right. Cheers. Ready? Cheers. Set, go. Just tastes like, um... Yeah. It's really good. Tastes like scrapple. It's good. Yeah, it's very good. It's like sausage-y. I mean, it's just very mushy. Yeah, it's mushy. It like blends in with the texture of the tatties. <clears throat> And the gravy. <laughs> um, and we didn't get it from like we got it from a place on the way home, and it wasn't like a traditional. Yeah, it wasn't Scottish like place. true Scottish, but so I'm interested to try it at like a really nice place. Yeah, but this is what was on the way home. So yeah, we tried. And it was cheap. Yeah. Mm. It's it's good. Oh, I mean, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, those are the questions you don't ask when eating haggis. Yeah. Could I have a drink? Yeah. Do you want the small or big? Uh, it doesn't matter. The big. <laughs> okay. We just thought we'd try out all the sizes of, um... Apple juice. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Cheers. So that was haggis. Alright. We have it straight from Scotland. <clears throat> so... The answer to the question is yes. The next question. What's the one food item you miss most from <clears throat> America? I miss sodas as yeah. they are in America. Me too. But that's probably not what I miss most. Yeah. But I do miss that. Like when you when you've been out and you're just feeling like you're dragging a little bit, and then you get like a nice fizzy iced Dr. Pepper. And it's just like really good, well mixed, not too sweet, not too syrupy. Yeah, just right. But icy and that's awesome. And that's just not here. It's they hard don't, to come by the here. The Coke tastes different, so it's not like because Dr. it's it, yeah. because it's different than what I know. I don't like it as much. Dr Pepper tastes almost in the a same. can. In a can, one tastes almost the same, but they don't have fountain, and we like. 
Oh, like you should, can ice. we grab the um, bottle of Dr. Pepper? Yeah. The bottle of Dr. Pepper, it's in a different shape. It's pretty cool. So, but you know what I think I miss? I just, I'm just missing familiar foods. Um, I think that's the most thing I'm missing right now. Well, it's, it's hard for us whenever we go to the grocery store because they have pretty equivalent foods, but we don't know what brands are the right brands to buy. Yeah. And so, like, we've tried, Ooh. like, five or six kinds of yogurt. And, and we found the best one. Yeah. And thankfully, it's, like, the cheapest, so. Yeah. So, look at that cool bottle. It's the little things that amuse us. So, that's cool. But I, yeah, well, like... A few days ago, when I made Rice Krispies, I was really just craving like the sweet cookie sweetness of like all American food. And so, because the junk food here, it's not very junky because it's made with better ingredients than the junk food in America. So, I'm missing that. But it's just a matter of getting used to it and figuring out what we like and what we don't like. and what to buy at the grocery store and just all that sort of thing. I think once we get that figured out, we won't miss it as much. Um, I miss Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Next question. What has God taught you in the last past four years? Highlights for someone contemplating ministry. So the last four years we've spent at <coughs> Gordon-Conwell, north of Boston, and then we've transitioned here I think the biggest thing I've learned, and I think we've learned together, is um, I preached a sermon in one of my last classes at Gordon-Conwell, it was on 2 Corinthians 1, and the big idea was that hardships are not a hindrance to ministry, but are at the heart <coughs> of it. Yeah. Back to it. Back to it. Back to question and answer. With Peter and Mary. Question and answer. All right, where are they? Where are you, questions? Well, I know we were asked for a tour of the flat, but we'll do that another day. Because <laughs> we have laundry drying right now. <laughs> List of words substituted for English words. Okay. So, an apartment is a flat. And, let's see, here's a good one. Okay. Pants oh. are not what I'm wearing right here, <laughs> but they're what I'm wearing under here. Pants are underwear. And pants are trousers. So, it's pretty embarrassing if we say anything about our pants. It makes me think back in my mind if I have said anything, but I don't think I have. Yeah. But, oh, what, what is it? Suspenders are... Braces. Braces. Yeah. I don't use the word suspenders very often, but yeah. if I did, I would need to say braces. Um, um, there are tons. Of, we were just so amazed when we came here how many words there are that are uniquely Scottish. <laughs> Me too. Okay. okay. Next question. Okay. Next question. Look it up. There are a lot of words, and we are just learning the yeah, beginning of it. We are, like sometimes there we just have to. A lot. We have to ask people to slow down when they're talking, because like our landlady was here and she was, she was like explaining the flat to us, our apartment, and she was saying something like she was explaining which keys were which. Yeah, and she's like, "This is for the Yale and." It makes sense because there's Yale locks, but we were like, what's a Yale? And yeah. so it's the lock, but they call it that. And they call vacuums Hoovers, which makes is sense. a brand of vacuum, but it's what they call them. Yeah. And they call the bathroom the loo. And if you are like in a store and you need to use the restroom, you say, can I use the toilet? It's, yeah, it's a different world. How did we meet? And what made you realize they were the right one for you? Aww. Aww. Well, we met at a very early age. Insert clip here. <laughs> um, we grew up at the same church. And so we grew up going, or I guess you were a grade ahead of me, so 
once we got into middle school and high school, we were in the same Sunday school class and that sort of thing, involved in the same ministries, inner city ministries. Um, and we, so our families knew each other, yeah. and but we call it the summer of love. We were juniors and seniors in high school, and it was 2005, so nine years ago. We went on a mission trip with the church youth group, and we were paired to teach together. And so every day we would spend time preparing lessons for the kids we were teaching. It was very fun. And I'll never forget that time we were we were in the hotel and we were planning out the session and I was going to dress up as a shepherd. And we just kept getting so distracted and talking about everything and anything. And so what we would say to get back on track is, so you're going to come in as a shepherd. And we said it a bunch of times. Because we'd start, yeah, just talking about other things. Because we were getting to know one another. Mm. And the rest is history. So, it all started with the summer of love. Yep. Okay, next. And how did we realize? Oh, it was love at first sight. It was... (laughs) <laughs> it was... It was it, back, back in that Christmas program. I knew I'm going to marry this girl. <laughs> I guess with time, we just got to know each other more and just thought, I think God made us for each other. It's true. <laughs> when do your first visitors arrive? I don't know. I don't know. We don't have anything planned yet. What is the view directly out your flat? Oh, it's awesome. I know we've shown it to you many times, but Arthur's seat. Insert clip here. Arthur's seat, the extinct volcano. Oh, okay. What is Peter's schedule going to look like once the orientation is over? Well, that's a very good question. We're still figuring that out, but I'm doing a research-based degree, which has two different routes I could take. One would be complete pure research, but actually I think what we're leaning toward right now is um, I'm still going to be doing just research and writing, but I'm going to audit three classes while I'm here, which means I'm just going to sit in on them and uh, like a preaching class I'm going to do this semester. It's on Tuesday afternoons and um, I'm going to be kind of almost like a adjunct faculty helping out with the class and help facilitate conversation and that sort of thing. Um, And I'm going to be, for each of the three classes that I audit, I'm going to be writing a smaller 5,000 word essay on an area of preaching. Um, So like the preaching class, I'm going to be writing about probably a certain author who's written a book about preaching and storytelling and um, so that's, that's what I'm going to be doing for kind of the next few months is doing these cl- probably two classes this semester and uh, one class next semester. And then toward, once we get around December, I'm going to be finalizing my research proposal for, uh, my larger dissertation <coughs> that I'm writing. And so that being said, what our schedule is going to be look like is just outside of those two classes, um, I'm going to be just researching and writing. And so our schedule is pretty flexible. I'll be doing a lot of it here at the flat. We'll try to get out into the city, go to coffee shops. Libraries. I'll spend a lot of time at <clears throat> the New College Library. Univer- the main university has a library. Edinburgh has a library. And so we'll make our rounds and... I'm excited. And I would think in the next few weeks we'll see more of what it's going to look yeah, like. Yeah, but. we're we're excited to kind of <coughs> establish a schedule because we're we've kind of been just <laughs> existing here in Edinburgh, and now we're I'm ready to dig into studying and writing. Um, so that's you're not boring me. I'm just tired. <laughs> <laughs> next question: How common? Are kilts or even just tartan? Is that how you tartan? Yeah. Tartan print. Kilts. Okay, along the street we live on, which is the Royal Mile. Totally the tourist strip. Yeah, and there are just like 
You know when you go to a beach and there's just beach shops all along? And they all have the same things, just... All the same trinkets? Yeah. They have those here, and they're kilt shops. Yeah. So it's... They're like... They're kilts cheaply, that aren't really made here. Cheaply made, yeah. like... Fake. Faker fake kilts. kilts. If you bought a full... We just found this out. If you bought a full kilt outfit that's, like, actually a kilt... Like, and all the pieces that go with it. It's really expensive. Next is, how's it going without Oliver? Oh, Ollie boy. He's just so cute. He's just so cute. And we love him so much. And yeah. we do miss him, but... Seeing how much fun he's having and how well he's succeeding and fitting in in their family, it's Michael, Amanda, and Emma, and Bennett, and now Oliver is staying with them. Amanda is doing an amazing job training him. It's just so fun. I get videos every day of their training sessions and just to watch his progress and he is, he's doing really well. And it makes me, it makes us so happy that he's happy and that he's getting the training he needs and um, He'll be ready for us when we get back, and we'll be ready for him. Mary, what do you do while Peter is in class? Good question. Because I've been not feeling well and on IVs, I'm doing a lot of resting, um, taking naps, and just taking it easy, especially on the days that I was in the hospital or when I wasn't able to leave the flat. I mean, a lot of the time I do have, like, therapy and stuff that I'm doing. Um, and like we said before, we want to get out together, like if yeah. I'm going to go to a coffee shop and do research, Mary, if Mary's up to it, she'll come with me. Yeah. And what's the time difference? We are five hours, well, from the East Coast. Yes. We're five hours ahead of you. What is Oliver trained to do if Mary had a medical emergency? Good question. Yep. We don't know at this point because when we left him, he's still in training. Um, I think ideally if I were to like go unconscious or something, he would either bark to get somebody's attention or go and like if Peter was in another room and didn't hear me or something, Oliver would go and alert him. Um, and when we say alert, he uses his nose to tap something like his hand. Like he would alert his hand to say, come on, you need to see Mary's not doing well. Um, so when we were living in our old apartment in Boston, we... If Mary was in the other room coughing really hard, um, Mary would often just almost mouth, go alert Peter, and he would come in the other room and nudge my hand. Did you have to bring documentation for the flight for your medications? Yeah, we brought, um, well, we kept all the medicines in their original bottles with their labels and everything. <coughs> and we carried pretty much everything on in terms of yeah. medications. Yeah. Um, Just in case baggage got lost. Yeah. Or something. So we wanted to have those with us, and we brought about three months worth of most medications, and we're able to get almost all of her magic at her medications here um, yeah, for when we need them. Yeah. Um, but we did bring the list of drugs. Yeah. So her doctors, we <clears throat> wanted to be super prepared. So we had a list of drugs from her doctors. We had a letter from her doctor that was signed by her doctor. That, especially explaining the vest that she had for <coughs> in-flight and her nebulized medication. How hard was it to explain your health history to new nurses and doctors in the new country? It's difficult. I mean, in some ways, my sister, who has cystic fibrosis, and I, our bodies react differently to many drugs and don't respond to drugs in the same way as like a normal CF patient. Normally, I use quotations because it's so different for everybody, but typically as you get older, your lungs have more bacteria and they get worse and then you need to go on IV antibiotics. You go on for a couple weeks and you get better. Um, but for Rachel and I, um, it didn't, it, the drugs just don't work like that. And you know, I've been on and off of IVs a lot and so to explain that to the new doctors, you know, I say, it doesn't work for me. But they're like, oh, okay, we'll try it anyway. So now I've been on IVs for two weeks and it didn't really work. So there's, 
an element of we can only explain so much and there's the element of they have to see me and my body and how I react and all of that. We see it as the Lord's will that he has us here with these new doctors. So in the meantime, while it's it's trying our patience to explain everything, we're just praying for patience and grace and trusting that the Lord is going to provide the medicines we need and the wisdom the doctors need to treat me. And at the parade today, we got a cool souvenir. It was on the ground. After the parade was over. Oh yeah, British flag. Now we are making a stance politically about yes or no, but we are making a stance that... We got a free flag. <laughs> Did you research a CF clinic before moving here? Yes. My doctors were in contact with um, the CF clinic here before we came. Yeah, so all that was in place. Have you been able to do any sightseeing? If so, what has been your favorite part? Ooh. We haven't been able to do a whole ton, but we have seen around city right. center so far. Yeah, and today we got to visit the National Museum of Scotland which was amazing. Yeah. It's really free cool. to get in, so I think we'll go back like once a week. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you probably could. It's really big and Yeah. It reminded me of the Smithsonian. Yeah. 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 It was really cool. Um, but we live right next to the Parliament, the Scottish Parliament. We live um, right, right down the street from the castle. The castle, yeah, and the palace. So we walk by these things like every day. So we do get to sightsee. We get to see awesome sights. Um, we haven't officially visited the castle or anything yet, but we will be. What has been the hardest adjustment you've had to make since living in Scotland? The hills. <laughs> the stairs. I think, I think adjusting back into city living. It's been four years since we were in Chicago, and Chicago's flat which is makes it easier yeah. um but city living with the hill it, it is a big adjustment and we're so thankful that we found a flat right downtown in the middle of everything yeah and the the hard thing that comes with it is living up a few flights of stairs so that's been my hardest thing yeah but it's good for me but it's so hard when I get to the top of the stairs and I'm so breathless and coughing and all of that. So we just take it slow and figure it out. What has the weather been like here? Weather's 50s, been 60s. Awesome. Yeah. I, we've said this all along, we didn't come to Scotland for the weather, but we sure have enjoyed these last few weeks. Yeah. Um, it's gotten into kind of the time of the season where in the morning it's really foggy, like we can't see Arthur's seat out our window, and then by noon it like clears up and is sunny and yeah, really nice. It's kind of chilly at night. Yeah, and yeah. most of the time it's just jeans and a jacket weather and... Yeah, we have rainy days and you just wear a jacket. And yeah. It's kind of normal. It's, it's not here. usually like rainy all day or anything. It's like part of the day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, it may change quickly, but are the people friendly? Yeah. Yeah, generally they are. There's... If you start a conversation. Yeah, we, we've we noticed, especially in our first week of being here, like, almost everywhere we went, we would strike up a conversation with, like, the cashier or the owner of the coffee shop or whoever, and just mainly because we were curious and often yeah. people are curious about Americans what we're doing here yeah. and they assume we're tourists and then they find out that we're staying for a year right. and then that engages more conversation right. so it's fun. And like what was it yesterday we were walking down the street and just this couple who's walking next to us was like where are you from and we were like um well clearly they were American they didn't have an accent so we said, Maryland, and we said, where are you from? And he goes, America. <laughs> like, yeah, we got that. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan and Ashley Reed, you guys just win the prize for the most questions yeah. ever asked. Why does but Scot thanks for the questions. Yes. Why does Scotland have so many steps? Because it's old, so it was just built around whatever was under it. So if it was up a huge rock, 
Well, that's where we'll put it, and we'll put a bunch of stairs up to it. Are there any other students from America in my school and classes? Yes, there's quite a few new PhD students who are from America and uh, existing students, and there's students from all over, like all over Europe, students from Asia. Um, I think the statistics are that 75% of the students at my school are from outside the UK. I do guess. we have neighbors? Good question. I guess we do, but we don't... We haven't we, met we them. We haven't met them. Will we own a kilt? No. Probably not because... They're just so expensive. They're expensive and we don't want to just buy one of the cheap fake ones. We'd love to find one in a thrift store. What is something Scottish that we Americans wouldn't know about? It's a good question. How about black pudding? Ooh. Do you know about black pudding? To my knowledge, it's oatmeal with blood. Enough said. What is it that you have from home that you can't have there? Oh. I know. There was this really great pizza place in the town we lived in near Boston. Mm. It was like so cheap and it was so good mm. and I'm really missing it and that's what I'm missing. And I thought that, yeah, I forgot to say that earlier, but that's, there's an answer. How is living in a flat different than being in an apartment? It's the same. Yeah. Why don't they have elevators? Because the buildings were built Especially in our area of town, we, we live in what's called Old Town. These buildings were built like hundreds of years ago. And so they just didn't think of it back then. <laughs> are there any museums and do you plan to visit? Yes, there are lots of museums actually. And we visited one today and we plan to do more in the future. Where are you going to church? There's a church a few blocks down called Carubbers and we visited there. And then there's a couple other churches we'll be visiting in the area, and we'll see where the Lord has us. How are the churches different than those at home? <coughs> so many of the churches have been turned into cafes and stuff. So it's sad. Um, but to see the vibrancy in the churches, or the church that we went to, it's yes. really neat. Yes. So the Lord is at work here. Yes. Will you have any shepherd's pie? I have heard about their beef pies and everything, and I think it's like on menus Scottish pie. But oh, I think it was called beef pie. Was it called beef pie? I'm not sure. Anyway, I think they have like several different kinds, and they look really good, but we haven't tried it yet. But that sounds really good right now. Mm -hmm. What are their coffee shops like? So coffee is oh. different a little bit here because. This it's, is tea country. It's tea country. I mean, we're outside of England, but we're in the UK. So tea oh. is very prevalent. Sorry, I was like, I <laughs> mean, your arm. <laughs> but <laughs> so you go into a coffee shop and I get the sense that there's more of an espresso drink yeah. culture here. People people drink filter coffee, which that's what they call it. So like brewed coffee where you go into a coffee shop in America and just ask for a coffee, you get brewed coffee. But here, like, you have to ask, I mean, you don't have to, but they on the menu they'll list it as filter coffee. Well, the first time we went to Starbucks, I mean Starbucks, we thought it would be the same. We wouldn't have trouble understanding them. Oh boy. We walk in and say, coffee please. And they say, well, first they asked us, like, something like, to drink it here or take away. Yeah, they were like, sit in or take away. But they said it really fast. Sit in or take away. With their Scott thick Scottish accent. And so we were like, uh, coffee? Coffee, please? <laughs> coffee. Hot drink. And, and so I'm like, uh, yeah, we'll take away. And then I said, so tall coffee. And he's like, filter coffee? And I'm like, uh... Sure. Coffee, coffee. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> and then I realized, oh, f coffee, filter, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes, yes, filter coffee. Yeah, it was interesting. Why golly, I think that was our last question. There you go. We gave you your A's for your Q's. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank that, you so much fun. for your questions. That was really fun. We'll have to do that more. <laughs> One, two, three, go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for <laughs> talking <laughs> to us. Thank you for 
coming along with us on this journey. It's technology is really cool. Yeah. And it's cool to connect with all of you and to share our lives with you. That's our heart behind making these videos is we want you to share in the joys and the hardships in every moment of that we walk through and yeah. we love it. And we love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.